Hey guys, Fat Man Tolly. Sitting down here in my man cave. Uh, my wife and another one of my granddaughters are upstairs along with my daughter. And we are, uh, apparently we're expecting another grandchild, so I'm kind of excited. Um, I wanted to do a quick book review on A Guide to Sheltering Place by Brian Foster, a.k.a. Zion Prepper. I've read this book through twice now. And I loaned it to a friend of mine so I could get her opinion as well. And we both came to the conclusion that this is an awesome guide. It gives you a lot of really good suggestions for, like, pre-bug out. You know, I'm, I'm one of those that I'm, I'm not thinking I'm going to have to bug out. I don't have a predetermined location. I have several locations that I can go to. But I don't have any predetermined location where I'm going to go or none of that. But it's a really well-informed book. He goes into a definition about what what sheltering in place is, different types of sheltering in place. You're not necessarily going to have to shelter in your home. You may have to. You may be out and about, and there's some kind of a uh, natural disaster, so to speak, where you need to shelter wherever you're at. Um, I live in the Upper Midwest in Minnesota. Snowstorms can be frequent, and I think the biggest one I've seen is it dropped 28 inches of snow overnight. Um, and anybody that's from the snow belt knows that's a lot of snow. And we had to shelter in place for about two days. It wasn't too big a deal. We're pretty well prepared in Minnesota, and uh, we can <laughs> pretty much get out of anything that we need to. Um, but that was a situation where had we not been prepared for something like that we would have been up a creek um, I have a story that I used to like to tell but I'm not going to tell it here someday I will uh, but it's a Thanksgiving story and it was it, it's pretty cool but we when we lived in the country when we first moved out there 20 years ago it was not uncommon for a power outage to last three to four days uh, when tornadoes came you you couldn't hear a siren out where we live. The nearest siren was over a mile away, and you couldn't hear it where we lived. So it was one of those things. You need to be prepared for these kind of things. So he goes into some water storage methods, some purification, how to purify your water. He doesn't go into any great detail, but he does have there's uh, some tables in here on some of the foods and their life-sustaining shelf life. You know, it's it's really cool where you can have, uh, you know, we always have flour in my house. And flour properly stored for a white or a whole wheat flour can last 10 to 20 years if it's stored properly. Wow, that's pretty incredible. We use a lot of flour. My wife bakes all the time. And it's just awesome. You know, other things like... Uh, Potatoes, potato flakes, 30 years. You know, honey, honey, salt, and sugar, they'll last indefinitely properly stored. But some of these things are just, it's invaluable as to what kind of stuff is in here. Um, some purification stuff for water using a standard chlorine bleach. Uh, and he, he gives some alternative heating methods, alternative cooking methods, things like that. And when you kind of research it a little bit beyond what he goes into, he gives a lot of awesome suggestions in here. And once you have the suggestions, it kind of gives you a direction to go as to what you can do to heat your home. There again, I live in the upper Midwest live in the southern part of Minnesota, and granted it's southern, but it ain't, it ain't warm by any means. You know, we generally get a couple of weeks a year where it doesn't get above zero. So, it's one of those things where you need to think of heat. How are you going to heat your home? How are you going to stay warm? If I've got a bug in for 30 days, what am I going to do to heat my house? Well, I'm probably not going to be able to heat the whole house, but I can keep one room nice and livable. I've got a nice big living room. 
and I can keep that at least livable um, with just some space heater alternatives. Anytime you've got an, a flame, a, a space heater that uses a flame, you have to consider oxygen too. Uh, carbon monoxide poisoning can set in pretty fast and you don't even know it. But he kind of goes in a little bit into some of that stuff. Uh, some different methods to heat, different methods to cook. There's just a, a phenomenal amount of information and this is a good way to start uh, before you get into something like the Prepper's Handbook which I will, I'm just about done with my second time through it, and I'll do a review on that as well. There's some uh, really good information in that book, too. So, if you find yourself with a few extra bucks, and I, and I really think you should find the few extra bucks to order this right off of Amazon, it's not that expensive. I think it was ten less than $10. Um, take the time, get the book. It's not very long. It's like 75 pages. So it's not a long book, but it's a very informative book. He puts a lot of information into a small package. So get the book, read it. Uh, let Brian know what you think. Do a review on Amazon. It's, it's, an, it's a great book, and I think there's a lot of really great information here. So with that being said, everybody stay safe. God bless, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.